Hello, today I want to speak with you about a fact we all have noticed over the last couple of years, but never spoke about in depth on this channel. The fact is, warfare has changed. We now live in a world where conventional peer-to-peer -peer conflicts have become an unpleasant reality again. The previous conflicts of the last two decades were mainly dominated by asymmetric warfare in mostly unconventional settings. With a strong emphasis on small, highly specialized and skilled armies, war has turned into an old-fashioned numbers game involving a lot of manpower and equipment again. Especially countries with larger populations have a strong advantage here by nature. But not only this, paradoxically, war has also become more unmanned, and new advances in technology have the potential to become a surrogate in warfare, acting as a force multiplier, especially for smaller countries who would otherwise be at a numerical disadvantage given the new, old circumstances. Rapid technological advances and their widespread use have already shaped the current battlefields of the world into something we have never encountered so far on that scale. From thousands of small weaponized commercial drones used for reconnaissance, recovery and combat purposes, to more advanced loitering munitions able to strike deep into the enemy's rear, or even remote controlled vehicles used as enabling elements for friendly forces to achieve breakthroughs or even challenge entire navies. The options and possibilities for the use of new technologies are seemingly endless. A simple look at the global defense industry shows that this trend will continue. The next logical step in the evolution of unmanned warfare is also already on its way and manifests through the integration of artificial intelligence to enable autonomous capabilities whose benefits go beyond just reducing economic and human costs. During my two visits to the International Defense Exhibition in the UAE's capital city of Abu Dhabi, so far, the direction was clear on all fronts. Unmanned systems dominated the scene. There were armed and unarmed drones, loitering munitions, and even unmanned ground and sea vehicles of all shapes and sizes displayed by a lot of defense contractors. But the biggest proof of this trend so far was showcased by the host country itself, the UAE. Within just a few years, the UAE's edge group has set the groundwork to develop a robot army capable of conducting various tasks. The sheer number of products developed developed in this niche is as impressive as it is scary at the same time. Since its inception in November 2019, Edge has brought more than 25 new products to the market in the areas of autonomous systems and smart munitions with the Made in UAE tag. Unmanned aerial vehicles like the QX family, which makes use of AI algorithms to target and strike with aim accuracy similar to laser-guided munitions, or the Shadow series, a high-speed, long-range loitering munition, are just a few examples I reported on two years ago. Now, two years later, the concept behind those two systems has already been proven effective and battled through similar systems and approaches that were not even as advanced as these two. Not only this, systems like them already seem to have become indispensable on modern battlefields, and this has happened in just two years. A new development that will surely have the same, if not even more impact, is the addition of swarm intelligence to drones. The new Hunter 2S drones are a good example here. They are able to share information to perform coordinated surveillance and strike missions, track and maintain their relative positions to each other and engage targets based on their shape and density. The Hunter 2S is only one part of the Hunter series, which comes in different sizes and payloads and can be launched from several different manned and unmanned platforms in large numbers to create overmatch and overwhelm an opposing force. However, unmanned systems will also increasingly support logistics during high-risk missions. Systems like the air truck, with a 500 kg payload capacity, can operate either pre-programmed or via a live operator over a range of 300 60 kilometers at a cruising speed of 120 kilometers per hour and will bring new, currently widely unused forms for unmanned aerial vehicles. The cargo is transported here using an airbox, which allows for fast and efficient loading and unloading of the cargo. Its use isn't only limited to the military, and I can see the civilian sector benefiting from it as well. Another interesting thing worth noting is unmanned combat aerial vehicles. During the last decade, this particular part of unmanned warfare was widely dominated by a few key players. However, this is about to change. Through systems like the Reach S, with its relatively low cost of about only $1.1 million, which makes it a third cheaper than similar systems, UCAVs will become more widely adapted, not only due to their capabilities, but also due to their increased availability alone. A more secretive system in that sector is the Genia project. Although it was displayed at the International Defense Exhibition 2023, nobody actually talked about it with me, except the company's chairman, Faisal al Banai, who took the time to answer some short questions about the vehicle. On, on this plane, like when we presented Reaches, we are saying, stay tuned, we are going to come with a number of products that are now on the UCAV category. So, we announced this now, like the same way we announced this a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. And I think we will start disrupting the entire UAV business with family of products that will be coming.
the people at the stand of Janai were actually quite secretive about the product. So yes. you could give us some more info <laughs> about it because like I think everyone is eager to know. I think the key aim of Janai, so if we compare, three chess is a tactical uh, ISR with light weaponization plate. So it's uh, at the entry level of the UAV. Janai sits in the other end of the spectrum where this is more of a fighter plane that regards much more stealthier plane. All the weapons are in the bay or inside the, the bay. It's supposed to be a faster plane. Payload, we are talking, she carry this version is around 450-500 kg payloads. But there will be multiple flavors of it coming out. But this category is more around really doing what a fighter plane does. Uh, at a stealthier, at a much faster uh, speed uh, than your typical drop. So it can engage air and ground targets. It can engage air, air to air, and ground targets. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for having us. Very nice Thank to you. see you again. As you can see, the industry has already widely introduced and adapted new concepts and products in this fast growing sector, and I have not even scratched the surface here. There are already a number of unmanned ground vehicles such as the Timi series, which has already been successfully used in Ukraine, or the Type X and RCV 8x8 that have the potential to further expand the already revolutionized reconnaissance sector through drones and can offer benefits while facing difficult operational tests such as combined arms breaches. Also, the maritime sector already gets covered through unmanned surface vehicles like the 170 detector USV, which can be configured for both manned and unmanned operations able to conducting surface warfare, surveillance and mapping missions. From all this, it is clear that nations face a lot of coming inevitables through the recent breakthroughs in AI technologies. One of these inevitables is to adapt or getting steamrolled by it. Fair enough, the UAE is a good example of adaptivity here by not only adopting Industry 4.0 technologies in the civilian sector, but also by leveraging advanced technologies such as AI to develop superior, autonomous solutions to bolster sovereign national and regional defense. The UAE's focus on autonomous capabilities and unmanned systems aligns with its broader efforts to boost the manufacturing sector. As part of the UAE's Operation 300 Billion strategy, which aims to increase the contribution of the local industrial sector to the country's GDP, the government has been actively supporting EDGES expansion and export of domestically manufactured products and services. The country is already a leading player in AI developments in the Gulf region and also expanded its international footprint by signing deals with major foreign partners, including Lockheed Martin, Raytheon and Embraer. It will be very interesting to see the future developments in that sector.